In the next set of videos, we're going to be learning about how to analyze and report marketing research data collected from an online survey using Microsoft Excel. Now, in these guided tutorials, we're going to be learning about the theories of the tests, how to apply those tests, how to apply them in Excel, and how to properly report them both visually and written. But to understand these tutorials, as is any case, we have to understand the data set that we're dealing with. You can't properly analyze any data that you don't understand. This is often a common problem when people try to conduct marketing analysis. They have data in front of them, but they don't spend the time to get to know it. So to do that, we're going to need to review the survey instrument that was first used to generate the data. We'll inspect the code book that relates the questions on the survey to the codes. And we'll take a look at the raw data file in Excel. By gaining an overview of how all these things work, we'll be in a much better position to actually conduct our analysis effectively. So what is the data that we're going to be using in our tutorials? This data set deals with craft beer consumption, primarily focused in San Diego County. We're going to be using a small subset of the full study that was conducted a few years ago. It's a subset because not all of the measures that were in the original survey are part of our data set, to keep it a little simpler. And we're only going to be analyzing 230 complete responses. There was actually more data than this. This is to make it a little bit more manageable, yet still realistic for all of our tutorials. In the Excel data set, we're going to be seeing a different set of topics, including behavior towards craft beer, characteristics and demographics of the respondents, awareness about craft breweries, their subjective knowledge about craft beer, and different beliefs and preferences that people have about craft beer. Let's take a look at some of these questions. Here are some basic screening and sorting questions to make sure people are answering the right parts of the survey. Here are some behavioral questions, first asking if individuals drank at least one craft beer in the last three months. And here, we have information about total beer consumption overall and total spending on craft beer. We have some measures related to craft beer related activities, such as attending a San Diego brewery tour. We also have some demographic measures, including household income at the monthly level, that's unique, marital status and age. We have questions related to people's subjective knowledge about craft beer. So I know quite a bit about craft beer measured on the five point Likert scale. We have familiarity measures related to craft breweries. We had a mini quasi experiment in this study where individuals were presented a six pack of Bud Light beer and a six pack of Stone Levitation Ale. And individuals are asked to explain what amount of money they'd be willing to spend while still considering each one of the beers a good value for the money. The idea here is the difference between the two. So if someone say it said $10 for Stone and say $8 for Bud Light, there'd be a difference of $2. That is an approximation of the premium that they'd be willing to pay for craft beer. There's also a set of belief and preference questions related to craft beer, people's preference for style, heaviness of a beer, hoppiness of a beer, or their opinions about craft beer in general. Craft beer is simply better than non-craft beer. Again, measured on a Likert scale, this time with an I don't know option available. And finally, we asked individuals their preference to drink a craft beer rather than some other alcoholic beverage, depending on where they were going. So if they're at a local bar, do they prefer to drink a craft beer over another alcoholic beverage? Or if they're at a sunny day at the beach, do they prefer a craft beer over something else? So now that we understand the basic survey questions that were asked, let's take a look at the actual data file in Codebook. There's an Excel file that's been provided to you. Check the link surrounding near this video called Craft Beer Excel N23 Summer 47. This is the file that we'll be using for all of the analysis examples in every one of these videos. If you open up the Excel file, again, don't use Google Spreadsheets, use Excel. You'll notice there's four tabs along the bottom, a README tab, a Codebook tab, and two different ways that the data file is presented. Let's take a peek at it now, We're switching over to Excel. Here we have our Excel file open, and sure enough, at the bottom, here's the README tab. Here's our code book. The code book explains the variable names for each one of the variables. These correspond to the questions we saw earlier in the video. We have a label here that describes in more detail than the variable label what the actual uh, variable means. And here's our code book. So for each one, of the variables, there were different coding possibilities. For example, here, frequency of craft beer consumption, survey options included not knowing, fewer than one, all the way up to more than 40. And we need to know how these labels correspond to code values in our data set. And we have that stored right here for us. Now let's take a look at the value tab. We'll notice that the variables are along the top and the 230 records 
are the rows. So each one of these rows represents a survey respondent. Here we can see in this tab the numerical values. And on the label version, we see the labels. So in other words, the value and the labels are the exact same thing. It's just that one uses numerical codes and one uses the text labels. Later, as we're proceeding with our analysis, sometimes it's much more convenient for us to have numerical values to work with. And in other instances, it's much more convenient for us to have the original text values. Hence, it's presented both ways. Here we can see some screenshots of the value tab and the label tab side by side. Remember, they're the same thing, just presented differently. Our variable names are on the top. Our survey responses run along the rows. And this is the most standard way that you'll see a data set presented from a marketing survey. The rows represent survey responses and the columns represent variables or values that were stored. It is also typical for both a value version of the data set and a label version of the data set to coexist. This isn't always the case, but it'll be convenient for us. That's our basic introduction into this data file that we'll be using for all the examples. It's time for you to get a little more familiar with the data set yourself. Go back to the video and look at the actual different survey questions and how they are presented on the screen. Check out the codebook and look at the values. Spend some time to just look at the data to get a little more familiar with how it's organized and structured. This is an essential task that anyone has to do before they can proceed with any more rigorous analysis.